Hi Matrix and welcome to this finance video, part one of present value annuity brought to you by the answer series. The present value annuity formula is similar but not the same as the future value annuity formula. And when two aspects in maths look similar, it is helpful to have a good look at what they have in common and where they differ. In part one of this video, we will look at deriving the present value annuity formula. But first, we need to check our algebraic manipulation skills. Let's have a look first here at the fraction A minus B over C minus D. If we were to take negative 1 out of the numerator, we would get negative bracket B minus A. And if we were to do the same in the denominator, we would get negative bracket D minus C. And the negative divided by the negative will give us a positive, and so we would end up with B minus A over D minus C. In other words, if we reverse the order of the terms in the numerator and in the denominator, we end up with a fraction which has exactly the same value. Now the significance of mentioning that is that if we have a geometric series with first term A and common ratio R, the sum of the first N terms of this is A times R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. But an equivalent formula for that is A times 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. Important to note here that if R was 1, we would be dividing through by 0, and we don't want to be doing this, so therefore it is stated that R is unequal to 1. Now that an understanding has been established around this, let's continue. Here we have a situation where a loan has been granted that needs to be paid off in N equal payments of X rand at regular intervals. If we look at the timeline, the loan was taken at T0. The first payment of X is made at T1. The next payment of X is made at T2. The next at T3, etc. All the way up to the nth payment of X rand at Tn. We want to work with the fact that interest is going to be charged at a rate of I per time period. And we want to scale back all these payments to see what their present value would be worth. In other words, we want to look at the T0 value in each case. So starting with this very first payment at T1, it will have a chance to be scaled back for one time period. So here we get the x times the 1 plus i to the negative 1. The payment made at the second time period will be scaled back for two time periods. So here we will times x by the compounding factor to the negative 2. And so on, all the way until the final payment made after n time periods, which will be scaled back n times. And so here, x will be times by the compounding factor to the negative n. Now consider the total value of all these payments on the left-hand side, in other words, the sum of all these values at t0. This is what it would look like if we were to write the sum of these payments out. The first payment, the second payment, etc. all the way up until the nth payment, which is the last payment. Can you see here that in fact what this creates is a geometric series, where the first term is the x times the compounding factor to the negative 1, and the common ratio is the compounding factor to the negative 1. Now if we remember this sum formula we referenced in the beginning of the video, here we can replace a with x bracket 1 plus i to the negative 1, and we can replace r in both the numerator and the denominator with the common ratio, bracket 1 plus i to the negative 1. The exponent here then becomes negative n. Let's see now how we can simplify that. The first step is to take this bracket, which has a negative exponent, and move it to the denominator. In this first step, that is all that has been done. And then in the next step, we distribute this bracket in. If we take the bracket and times it by the 1, we get 1 plus i. And then if we take the bracket and times it by the same bracket but to the negative 1, in other words by its reciprocal, we get 1. You can also understand the multiplication of these brackets using exponential laws. This definitely looks a bit simpler now. And one last step, a final simplification of the denominator. The 1s cancel each other out and you're left with i. And here it is, the present value annuity formula. So if we look at what this formula is saying, the present value will be the regular payment, in this case of x rand, multiplied by 1 minus the compounding factor to the minus n, 
all divided by i. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you now feel ready to see how to apply this formula in part 2 of present value annuity. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.